Now, obviously, AEW was trying to do something decent this week, especially knowing that next week the show on Christmas, blah, blah, blah. They're looking at it and saying, like, hey, we want to do something good this week. There's a reason you're putting Brian Danielson versus Hangman Page in a world championship match on the show. You're trying to make something happen. I get that. And I will say it's slightly refreshing to see a slightly different format of show this week. It was. And I could see what they were trying to do, especially with the way they, they opened this show this week. Um, Brian Danielson versus Hangman Page kicking off the show, a world championship match kicking off the show. Yeah, I get that you want to have the most viewers possible on your most important people, on your most important title. I totally get that. Especially when you look at the ratings trend and the viewership trends for your weekly shows. You want as many people to watch it as possible. I totally get that. I also get that if you're going to do some big long match, having somebody like Brian Danielson in that spot makes a shit ton of sense. Because I'm sorry. He's just so much better than Kenny Omega on every level. I can't imagine looking at Brian Danielson, especially this version of Brian Danielson, and saying, yeah, I think Kenny Omega is better. You're fucking insane. Just insane. Danielson's certainly better on the mic. He is certainly a better personality. I think he's a better true worker, by far. He's a better character, a better politician. You know, all of those things that matter the most in professional wrestling. Brian Danielson has them all. So I understand you want to get big shine on Hangman Page. You want to spotlight one of your biggest names in Brian Danielson. You got the right person there to be the anchor to do this long match. That said, I'll say this. At least Hangman Page didn't win clean and Brian Danielson didn't lose clean. Because to go through all of that exercise just to have one of those two results happen would have been really, really stupid. That said, there should be a lot of things that are you should be cautious of or concerned about with respect to putting an hour-long world title match at the beginning of your show. A lot of things to be concerned about or cautious about here. Number one. You run the risk of programming your audience by saying, we always put our most important people, our most important shit first. So if you are going to watch, only watch the first 15, 30 to 60 minutes, the hell with the rest of it. That does not set a good precedent. Why are you blowing your load so early? It's like coming before you've even taken your damn draws off. Do we really need a 60-minute Broadway here? Did we really? Understand you don't want to do 5 or 10 minutes of the World Championship match and there's actually story here, but did we really need a 60-minute Broadway? And I say that especially because you had multiple commercial breaks during this, the 60-minute man match format just doesn't work as well on TV. And especially, I know at least on two of the commercial breaks, I didn't even have the split screen, like full-on commercial breaks. It's basically telling me, this match is so important, check out these fucking ads instead. And does this really help either guy? I saw a lot of people talking about Hangman Page needed to win this, which I fundamentally fully disagree with. The joy with Hangman Page was in the jury journey and the arrival at the destination. It's not the path as world champion. Brian Danielson is much better suited to be a long-term champion for this company than the Hangman Page is. Having Hangman Page lose to Brian Danielson is not necessarily the worst thing because you can start the journey back over again. And you've got a built-in story where you can say, hey, he won it, but he couldn't defend it. Now, next time he's got to win it and prove he can defend it. You know, that type of thing. The whole thing of, well, the younger guy's got to win, as Brian Danielson would say, that doesn't work for me, brother. 
but does it really help either guy? Like the way they executed it, if you're going to do a 60 minute draw, like the way they did it worked. You leave the visual that Hangman Page would have beaten Brian Danielson if he had 20 or 30 more seconds. Yet you leave the visual as well that he didn't beat Brian Danielson and therefore Brian Danielson could say, you didn't beat me, I get another shot because you've got to prove you can beat me. I just ran out of time. It works. Like if you're going to do it, the worst thing they could have done here was have a clean, decisive to finish either way. So if it took almost 60 minutes for Brian Danielson to be Hangman Page in this spot, that doesn't look good. If it took almost 60 minutes for Hangman Page to be Brian Danielson in this spot, doesn't really look that good either. But I think the question is, like, how do you follow up on this? Are you doing another 60-minute match? Are you going to sit there now and do Steel Cage, other things? Like, is that really going to work? Not every title reign should be long. Nor does every world title change necessarily need to happen on pay-per-view. I'm not saying you necessarily had to do a title change tonight. But for those that are saying, like, hey man, Paige should have won here. No, he shouldn't have. Brian Danielson is the much better character, much better position to carry the strap. And even within this whole program, Hangman Page has been a very background player. Not a great indication of somebody you want to keep the belt on for a long time. But I still question the logic of just having to do this match. Like, sure, the match and move marks are going to fucking geek out for this. They always do because they have no standards. Especially when it comes to AEW in the land of Kanistan. The only thing that would have spiced up this show would have been Tony Khan coming out, and I tweeted about this, he should have come out on live national TV and fired Urban Meyer's ass instead of doing it via social media in the middle of the damn night. But yeah, like, I get what they were going for here. And the match itself was really good. It wasn't just 60 minutes of false finishes, a bunch of high spots, and a bunch of no-selling bullshit. There was actually layers to it. They were telling a story. There were consequences to the moves. That part I greatly appreciated. But that is yet again why Brian Danielson is an infinitely better performer than Kenny fucking Omega. And bang if you don't like that. But yeah, we should not be encouraging this type of behavior on a consistent basis. This, if anything, should have closed out the show. Make this the second hour. Try to beef up your second hour. You're, already, you're throwing more at the first hour, which already does better by comparison. You're programming your audience that the rest of the show doesn't matter. And that's a very dangerous precedent to set. So yes, I know some of you will complain because I'm complaining or pointing out things. Go fucking cry about it. It's just what it is. Uh, but outside of that, I was really disengaged from the rest of the show in part because I just watched an hour-long wrestling match that actually fucking mattered. Wardlow versus Matt Seidel, I'll say this. I love the touch of, you know, Wardlow's going after another one even when Sean Spears is telling him he's beat, that's enough. We're about to get that Wardlow and MJF split and I am here for it. I am totally here for it. Let the Wardlow babyface run begin. So that way he can be separated from MJF and then he'll get lost in the fucking shuffle. Surely he will. Serena Deeb versus Hikaru Shida. <laughs> LOL, Shida wins. <laughs> was there any other result that would have happened here? I'm not going to shit on it because honestly I wasn't focused on it. Because honestly I didn't care. Because I was still trying to get over the fact that we had just watched an hour long damn match. And then you get the main event which is what I was assuming was going to be the other big thing on the show, which was MJF versus Dante Martin battling out for that diamond ring. And I giggled at the Ryback crack by MJF. That was good. I got to ask, though, does Dante Martin do anything other than flip around? Like, can he actually work at all? Can he actually sell at all? Can he actually tell a story at all? Or is it just literally paint by number, spot one, spot two, spot three, flip four, five, six, seven? Like this is supposed to be wrestling. It's not supposed to be karate, jujitsu, and goddamn gymnastics. 
If you want to watch that shit, you want to do that shit, then go do that shit. I understand you could incorporate elements from it, but literally, the fuck is this? And of course, because fans have no more standards, because they've been so Meltzer magooed into thinking that matches and moves matter the most, they love this shit, and I don't. I think it's fucking stupid. The surprise at the end was nice, with Sting and Darby Allen. That was good. What? You thought it was going to be Bray Wyatt? Ha! <laughs> Sting ain't got time for that. He's got a main event spot to be in, brother. <laughs> I'll say, like from an audio-visual standpoint, that pop when CM Punk came out, when inner, the uh, pinnacle, excuse me, was fucking working over damn Sting and Darby Allen, that punk pop for CM Punk was freaking massive. I'm a mark for huge pops like that. And that was incredible. That is the type of stuff that you want to see closing out your show. And having Sting wanting to align with Sting and Darby Allen and say, you know what? We're going to tag up and we're going to team up and we're going to take you on. I'm here for it. But we also know this, Philip. I guess if you can't beat him, join him. Huh, Philip? We all know the truth. The only reason you want to join up with Sting is because you fear Sting. Don't be scared. You know you want that smoke. Just go ahead and call out Sting for a one-on-one -on -one challenge. Would you please? Would you please? But that said, the close to the show was great. And just again, I come back to that hour-long world title match. Did we really need that? Now, there is a chance that it'll pop a slightly higher viewership number this week because there was something for the audience to get engaged in over the course of the entire first hour. That is certainly possible. Could also be possible that fans turned out, tuned out because they didn't give a shit about an hour-long match. But more than likely, probably held steady or slightly grew over the course of an hour because fans were getting invested and bought in. So I get that. But damn. To put that on as the opener, like I said, I just don't know that that is something that should be celebrated or propped up as a good thing to do.